Hello folks, this is Pete Jones, aka Tiger Moth Tales, and I wanted to tell you about the Tiger Moth Tales Behind the Music series. This is where I do a commentary on the albums and talk you through the creation of the songs and the thoughts behind them, etc. Uh, so, if you like to hear me babbling as well as singing, <laughs> whatever that should be, uh, then you can find all these Behind the Musics at the Tiger Moth Tales Bandcamp page. So, uh, thanks very much, I uh, hope you enjoy them, you can stream or download them and we're going to show you some snippets now of what to expect from the Behind the Music series. I wanted to thank you, as always, for your support, especially in these difficult times, and happy listening. I had not written anything verging on prog since I was in my teens and in fact in my childhood from the age of seven or eight up until when I was about 14 I was writing songs that certainly had a prog leaning in that they had sort of long instrumental sections different time signatures and they were quite lengthy and sort of in a free form style and they were story songs written about scenarios again that's something that I put down to the fact that I had the the gift of music and that I was able to create as I went rather than having to think about what I was writing that meant that I could just get the tape recorder running get the old Yamaha keyboard fired up the old Yamaha 270 good heavens put a beat on and just sort of start singing about some made-up story in my head or well, anything that came to mind really so again the boundless sense of childhood imagination and how the childish mind can just go off into any any world it wants and, and create these scenarios and that obviously I had, the, I had the bonus of being able to convert that into music. I wanted to open up with a bang, a grand opening and all the rest of it. This chronicles the first part of the Sleeping Beauty story. Uh, the princess is born, everyone's celebrating, they invite all the guests, uh, but leave out the evil fairy. Uh, who throws a wobbly, uh, curses the princess, who eventually pricks her finger and falls asleep for a hundred years. This is known to you all, of course. Uh, so it starts off with this really uh, celebratory opening and ends with the curse coming into effect. and I do hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Huga. Uh, and when uh, my bandmates asked me about it, um, I said, well, when in doubt, uh, think of Freddy Krueger. <laughs> but uh, no, please don't, because uh, Huga is a Danish slash Scandinavian custom or idea. And as far as I can tell, it just means family and friends getting together with uh, hot coffee and cakes and breaking bread and lighting the fire and just getting together and in a real sort of family community style and really enjoying each other's company and being warm and safe and in the spirit of friendship and, and love. It's been said by some that Tiger Moth Tales is just another one of those Genesis derivative so-called prog bands and uh, they, they've got a point. <laughs> and uh, yeah, for this album I kind of was going for a trick of the tail vibe, I mean even to the point of the drums which I did myself on the keyboard of course but I tried to get that 70s uh, sort of boxy sort of drum sound which seemed to be around on albums like the Trick of the Tail and then there were three along with the kind of flowing Moog solos and stuff. Just really having a bit of fun with this one, uh, trying to recapture a bit of the vintage sound and, and indeed the, uh, the bombast and the egotistical nature of Toad of Toad Hall. A really fun track and one which has proved, as I say, fairly popular amongst the Moffingtons and one that's also great fun to do live on stage, which of course we have done many times with the lads back in those days when we were allowed to gig. Uh, but anyway, enough of that. King of the road. <laughs> It's very much still topical that I'm talking about this now because uh, we have just recently celebrated the year anniversary of three weeks to flatten the curve and here we are, we still find ourselves very much in a pickle. Supposedly we are seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. I have my own pessimistic thoughts about this but I shan't go into that too much here. But this album was kind of the result of various things coming together from different directions as is often the case. I had already started to come up with a couple of tracks and around that time 
my friend Mark, who lives in the village, proposed a challenge that I could write a track about what we're going through at the moment, specifically looking towards the village. And this came from a talk that he had with someone in the local council because they were talking about what we would do when lockdown finished and perhaps having some sort of celebrations and maybe an event in the village hall, some kind of presentation and a bit of a revival. Mark suggested that it would be great to have a video to go with it and if we're going to have a video then why not have a song. So yeah, that was the plan with this track. So the idea is not just about what's going on now but that the village has been around for a very long time, has had to overcome various things as everywhere else has to you know we have the, the powerful overlords and economic problems and it was kind of an attempt to look at things that have happened in the past we've got through those and we've done it before and we can do it again that kind of thing keep calm and carry on all that kind of vibe yes we've seen all the myths and legends recessions and depressions 